Okay, in this video for module 6, we are going to see how to do more loops. We're going to see how to do for loops. We have seen how to do while. Um, now, how do we use a for loop? So different loops work well in different situations. The for loop um, essentially could be used for a range of values. So we might have a list of numbers. We might have a list of um, names that we would want to say for um, a list of all of these names. We would want to do something um, maybe starting from the number one till the number 1000. We want to check for all prime numbers. So the for loop kind of helps us go through sequentially from one to the other. I should say continuously or contiguously. So let's try some um, for loops. So I'm not going to have anything particular, but this is going to have a few different for loops, how we can use for loops for a couple of different situations. Let's start out um, by seeing how to use for loops to print triangles um, with you know asterisks. So if you want to just print a couple of different shapes. So let's start with some variables. Let's say come up with a variable n equals 1 and m equals 10. So 1 is our starting point and m is our ending point. And let's um, write a loop, a for loop that says starting from 1 through 10, I want to do something with it. Maybe I want to print a bunch of numbers or a print a bunch of uh, asterisks or whatever whatever it is. So let's say 4 is our syntax x in range open parenthesis n comma m plus 1. So what does that mean? So let's look at it for x. x is any variable and that is going to take each one of these values from the range n. n is 1. Um, n to m plus 1. m is 10, so we're actually looking from 1 to 11. So if you want to include 10, you have to go 1 over because it's not going to include 11. So we are really looking from 1 to 10. And x is going to take the value of 1 first, do what we tell it to do in the for loop, then it's going to go to 2, and then do what we want to tell it. So let's do something very simple, like print x. So we can see what x is when we go through this for loop. So that's it. Let's start with that very simple program. And let's run the module. It says, yep, I want to save it. And notice, it simply prints x. So the first time, x is 1. Then we go through x is 2, x is 3, x is 4. So the step is 1, notice. So by default, the range is starting number, ending number, and the step is 1. What if I wanted to only print in steps of 2? So you could have the option to put in a third parameter for this range function. And that is our step. So now what we're going to get is every other number printed. So instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, we get 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. And of course, the next number is 11. So we don't print 11 because our range is only until 10. So that's kind of what the for loop does. Now let's change this a little bit. What if I wanted to print um, a triangle shape with 10 lines in here with a bunch of asterisks? So let's see what this does. So let's go back, put our for loop the way it is like that. And let's see what we can do with nested for loop. Essentially, we are looking for a shape that's going to look like this. And I'm going to just do the shape here to show you. So what we want is an asterisk, two asterisks, then three, then four, and so on and so forth. So our shape kind of looks like that. And if we say starting with one and ending at 10, the last line will have about 10 stars. So let's see how we can do that. What we are essentially saying is for every line, we want asterisks. But the number of asterisks for every line increases. So the first line is 1, then it's 2, then it's 3, and so on and so forth. So which means we must have a for loop inside of a for loop. So for the first line, for x in range, n 
to m plus 1, we need another loop with another variable for y in range. And in this case, what we want to do is for every line, we want the number of stars to keep incrementing. So the outer loop says for every row, starting with 1, the first row. In the first row, what do we want? We want one asterisk. So for y in range, I want 1, comma, x. So I want to start with 1, but how far do I want to go? The first time, we'll go till 1. So 1 till 1, we get 1 asterisk. Then the next time, 1 till x would have gone to 2, 1 till 2. So this loop will execute 2 times the second time. And then the third time, it will execute three times, and so on and so forth. And inside of that loop, what are we really doing? We are printing one asterisk. And those asterisks, remember, they all need to be separated by space. So for example, the first asterisk is one like that. Then the second asterisk would be asterisk space asterisk, and the third one would be asterisk space asterisk space. So we need to separate them all by spaces. So how do you do that in Python? So here's what we do. We tell it to print an asterisk. And then we say, I want to end it with a space. I don't want to end it with a new line. By default, if we don't put anything there, it ends it with a new line. So what we really get is all the asterisks separated by new lines, and that really doesn't work very well. So now that is inside of this for loop. So when one row is done, I do want a new line. And here is a character that will actually print a new line for us, which is that backslash n inside of single quote, will actually print a new line. So let's look at this for loop again. I'm going to save my file. So we have a nested for loop because we want multiple lines. And in each line, we want multiple stars to be printed. So this is the total number of lines we're going to have. For x, that means for each row, starting with 1 till 10. In each row, I want how many stars do we want is what this for loop defines. But those number of stars vary. They start with 1, and the next time they increment. And if you notice, x starts at 1, then it increments to 2 and 3, and that is how many number of stars we want on each line. So we can use x here to control the number of stars. And this is our starting point. We want to start with one star, and we want to stop with one star the first time. Then we start with one star, and then we want to stop with two stars. And these stars are going to be separated by a space. And when the one line is done, before we go to the next line, I wanted a new line printed. So this print statement comes under this for loop. Okay, So let's see how that looks. And so there is our 10 stars. Now you can always try. Let's see how it tries without that, how it looks without this new line. So you put a hash there to say, I'm going to comment that out and try it. And notice how we get all the stars on one line. That doesn't look like a triangle anymore. So we need this new line to be able to say, after every row, I do want it to go to the next line. So you can try different things. What happens if you put that new line in there? Now we're going to get something else that we probably don't want. All the stars on separate lines. That's not what we wanted either. So by trying different things in the same program, you can kind of learn how these different loops work. So this is the example of the nested for loop. Now, let's see a couple of more loops right here in this program. Um, how to use for loop with lists. A couple of different lists, let's see. So maybe a list of numbers. Let's see how to list, how to sum, calculate the sum of a list of numbers. I'm going to have a list of numbers called numbers equals. And if you want a list, you put it inside square bracket 
For example, I'm going to separate them by comma. So this is my list. So I have five numbers and they are all separated by uh, a comma. Now this is my list. I want to calculate the sum of all of these numbers. So I'm going to say 4x in numbers because numbers is the name of my list. x is just a variable. Sum equals sum plus x. So it's going to first take x will be 2. Sum will be 0. 0 plus 2 is 2. Then the next x will be 3. And the next x will be 12 and so on and so forth. And we just keep adding those numbers to our sum. So now let's see. Once we are done with that, we can print sum and see what sum has. Okay, let's run that. So now we have a couple of different for loops. It's going to print a bunch of stars and it's going to say the sum of all of these numbers is 70. What if I wanted to see if instead of calculating the sum, maybe I wanted to see if each one of those numbers is divisible by 3. So if x mod 3 is equal to 0, that means if x is divisible by, by 3, then print x. So it's going to look at each number and see if it is divisible by 3, it's going to print it. If not, it's not going to print it. So we have a couple of numbers that should be divisible by 3. So notice it prints 3, 3 is divisible by 3, and 12, and that's it. So we can do several different things with a list. Let's try one more and we can be done. This section will check for vowels in a string. What if we have a string and we want to see how many vowels we have in that? So let's first use this, put a counter, count equals zero, text equals, this is my string. This is two, we can put whatever we want, count the number of vowels. And we're going to go through this string and count the number of vowels in it. So for x in, again notice x is just a variable that is used to go through our whatever it may be, our text list or a numbers list. In this case, I called my variable text. Um, so for x in text, I want to check if x is equal to a or x is equal to e or x is equal to, we check for all the vowels, that's what I'm doing here, i or x is equal to o or x is equal to u. Now you must also check for uppercase if you're going to do this, but I'm just doing lowercase count equals, so if it is any one of those, we increment count. And then finally you come here and say I want to print count, so that will tell me how many vowels I have in that string. So now we have three different loops running. So of course you need to put some text around all this that says uh, numbers that are divisible by 3 are 3 and 12, and the number of vowels I have in that is actually 11. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That's right. So this kind of shows you all the different for loops and how you can use for loops. We'll see more about lists in the next couple of videos.